Hey YouTube, this is Michael with Zone Robotics and this is another bi-weekly update. I know I missed the last bi-weekly update so this video is going to be a little bit long. I do have a lot of stuff that I recorded and I'm kind of going to throw it together in this video. So I'm going to start from the most recent developments and kind of walk back through what's happened since then. Um, this is the very latest bot that I printed out and as you can see it has kind of a bulldozer type attachment. The main purpose of this attachment was not actually to lift stuff up or move stuff, that's just kind of an afterthought. The main purpose of this was to get us some um, tilt to our camera. So if we use the servos we can look up and we can look down and it does give us quite a range. We can now look up and actually see people. I've mapped this movement of these servos into the Android application such that um, you, you simply go up or down on the left hand joystick and then it, you know, it actually makes you look up and down. Apart from that, most of the things are relatively the same. I've made a couple of small uh, improvements that you can't even really see like just made the walls a little bit thinner so they would fit and stuff this shell I printed out um, this whole top piece as one I merged the sides and the top to try and make it an easier print because I was getting a lot of shrinkage on the uh, ABS plastic and I also printed this out on a raft so it looks kind of weird on the top and I still got a little bit of shrinkage so I'm working on that and I'm still working on this um, this piece right here in the front, as you can see, I had to put in some spacers in there, and this this piece might get bigger. It might end up having a hole in the middle, so when it goes up, it doesn't block the camera and that sort of thing. But let me just show you guys what it looks like when you when you look up or look down. So here I'm looking straight. If I can find my mouse, all right. So here I, I look up. You know, and you can see almost all the way up to the ceiling. And then you can look down. And if I had something in front of me, that would look better. You just put something in front of the robot. Like, like this screwdriver right here. Because you're always trying to see, like, what's in front of you. So you can move it around. Let me do that down. And see, now I can see that screwdriver, whereas before I couldn't. And... This, of course, in the Android application, which is a little bit easier to work with than this Java application, there's a joystick on the right for moving around, and then there's a joystick on the left to control that servo. So, other than that, it's, you know, the forward, back, you know, right, left, still works. It has the, the sensitivity. We still have the very low latency camera and all that. Um, when you have this thing up like this, you can look down and move at the same time. I mean, I don't know what's really going to come out of this type of movement, but we need to think into that a little bit more. And looking up, well, that's a little bit too up. But depending on, see, you can still move around, so, I mean, really, you could dig dirt or something with this, and then lift it up and maybe put it into the back of another one of the bots or something. You can also kind of change this up and make it so that you know this piece doesn't exist so when it lifts up it doesn't look down or up and, or you know change it around. So we're still thinking about this a little bit but it does give you the ability to look up and down which was you know it's a huge plus when you're driving it around and we've been using this quite a bit to battle with the cats and with each other and stuff so it's it's definitely a plus to look up and down so the servos there's two different servos inside of here like right inside of the tracks you can almost see it there you'll be able to see it better on the other one but one of them I reversed it so it's only using one servo line so there's still three servo lines free and you only have to send a command to one of the servos to be able to look up or down. So hopefully we'll have some more videos of us driving around and using it and stuff. I, I still haven't printed the front plate and I haven't printed the, the back plate yet. So I'm going to have to print those out and complete this bot but it's pretty much done. Just a few plates. 
I also have to figure out where I'm going to stick the uh, the laser because I mean if you have a um, if you have a this bucket in the front here then it blocks your laser so I'm going to kind of go over in a backwards way back to the other robots that I've been working on see this was the one just previous to this one and I'm going to retrofit and upgrade this one to be just like this one so the point is to get a whole bunch of robots that are exactly the same so that we can use them against each other in games and that sort of thing um, so this one I, I kind of had a propeller type design that that works pretty good you know it lifts it up and it can look up and look down on this one I do have the front plate the um, the sides to this one are get some more light over here the the sides were separate pieces from the top on this one so on the latest one the sides and the top are all the same piece which was a little bit easier to print and will be easier to manufacture um, Apart from that, you can see this this bottom lip down here. I actually printed this whole thing out, so this one will be completely closed up, whereas this one has a big old hole here in the front, so that was kind of... I might just print a hole, complete another bottom for this guy. But it also has the servos over there, and the reverse servo on one side, which is pretty easy to do when you get down to it. It's not too hard to reverse a servo. It's just a matter of unsoldering and resoldering four different wires. So, and previous to that was this guy who was pretty robust, but we still didn't have the bottom figured out. If you just look at the bottom of these things, it's a lot different. You know, it's either a big old piece of plastic or it's this, which is kind of showing the, the batteries and, and wiring and that sort of thing. I also made another improvement on the inside and I'll have a video showing kind of what's on the inside and how all that connects. But now on the inside of this it's 100% um, connectors so you can just disconnect and reconnect stuff. I don't have to worry about you know some sort of solder connection or glue or something coming loose. You know there's, it's all pretty solid in here and the only thing that I have left to do on the board itself is just replace a whole bunch of connectors with uh, Molex shrouded connectors. And then, I mean, the circuit board on the inside is completely done. So this guy still works and works pretty good. Uh, we were still trying to figure out, you know, how this thing is gonna connect. The way that we figured out how to connect that was we just extended it a little bit in front of everything and then we put a screw all the way through. So you see the, here there was no screw and this thing would just lift right up off of it. None of this stuff is even screwed down. But that did give us a lot of clearance in the front, whereas this one doesn't really have that much clearance in the front. So uh, at some point we'll probably address this again and see if maybe we can move these screws back a little bit. Uh, maybe there's another way to connect this in without losing all this space in the front. Because it is advantageous when you run into a wall or something to just have those in the front and then you can climb straight up the wall. But with the bucket, that's not so much of an issue because you're going to have the bucket in the way anyway. Uh, before this guy, we had this one where we um, were trying to figure out how to move the camera. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't dive more into that because having cables that move around a lot causes all kinds of issues as I found in my 3D printer, which I've already repaired like three times because of cabling that basically is always moving so it creates a short and then it breaks so that that would have been issues that we would have had to deal with and whatnot so definitely we don't want to have the camera move around until we move it up into this area in the back and then it will be more like a bulldozer with the cab up here and then the camera can get complete movement up here to see everything that it's doing and then the bucket will be down here in the front so that's that one and the very first one that I made was um, this one which is my son's and still his favorite with all the Lego connectors and whatnot all over it and it still works great uh, has the laser on the front but we had the uh, the communications thing in the or circuit board in the back which was one big change that we made now the, the circuit board is connected through a cable all the way to the back and it goes in between the two boards so that way we can just have all of this be in one 
uh, box up here in the front as opposed to have to dealing with you know something in the front and something in the back popping out but so we're getting towards something that is you know pretty close to being finished just a little details here and there another big change that we made was we we made it just a little bit wider so that we can have the um, the motors stick out a little bit more and then we can have the top kind of lip down into the bottom you see here there was no clearance for the side to go in so these are little things but with uh, printer issues and whatnot we had to print out a whole bunch of different pieces but it definitely has been evolving from this you know to this to this to this and just recently to this but the evolutions are much smaller with each round because this this guy is really similar to this guy it's just this one has these um, they're called uh, booms and a bucket on it and those two servos but the the general structure of this has all remained the same and the bottom has pretty much been the same for a very long time so that's it for this uh, Friday. I will see you guys again in two weeks and hopefully we'll be able to make some videos of like the robots running against each other and that sort of thing. So that should be pretty neat to watch. Thanks for watching. Bye. a little video of it kind of banging itself around to show how robust it is. You can see if we change the bucket size around and whatnot, you can almost get to the point where one of them can go and run into the other one and throw it around or something. <laughs>